Actually, uh, southwest of China, northeast of India, Bangladesh and Myanmar, all these regions together. Uh, however, India had not accepted the DCIM till last year. When Li Kachyam came to New Delhi last year, this was accepted, but in a typical bureaucratic fashion, the government of India, what it said is, we will have a committee to look into this. One of the things in, in the bureaucratic circles in India is, if you don't find an answer, you set up a committee. And after 10 years, you will realize that the committee had gone into, and then they set up another committee. So it's basically buying time in India. So that is what we have done for the PCI. In this joint statement, uh, Prime Minister Modi mentioned about the PCI. He said, provided it ensures security and war. Now that is a very clear uh, uh, caveat that he mentioned. Provided BCIM uh, ensures security and war. As you know that some of the Northeast rebels have, uh, uh, have taken refuge in Yunnan province. Uh, there are some reports which suggest that they receive uh, arms and uh, funding from Myanmar and China. For instance, for those of you who do not know about this, I would suggest the Outlook magazine in June 2011. Uh, there is a huge report about the <coughs> arms transfer, which obviously governments will deny. All governments will say, no, we have nothing to do with this. Uh, and, but there is uh, at least some smoke, if not fire, we do not know whether the fire exists. There is some smoke in relation to this. So we see that a conditional acceptance of the PCIM was made day before yesterday in the joint state, uh, which suggests that the expectations of China have not been met in the joint state. What are India's expectations? Now, there were some reports uh, a few days before President Xi Jinping's visit. Uh, the Mumbai Consul General of China stated that China is going to invest 100 billion dollars in in industrial parks, in infrastructure projects, in manufacturing sector, and other things. But finally, the joint statement mentioned about 20 billion dollars and in the next five years. So which means roughly about four billion dollars. And this is on paper, by the way. There is nothing on the table. So it depends on the progress on the ground that we will we will probably see this 20 billion dollar investment. Uh, that is also not quite huge amount in comparison to the uh, 20 to 30 billion dollars that India receives every year as investments. So far, India received $269 billion of income. Every year, India receives about $20 to $25 billion. And already this year, we received uh, quite substantial because the investment confidence is big with uh, a host of uh, restructuring policies by the new government. Uh, whatever be the case, what we have seen is Indian expectations are also not matched from 100 billion to 20 billion dollars in terms of the investment. There is also then the, uh, as the organizer mentioned, there is the Truman Demcho related incidents, which have uh, relatively cast a shadow on the uh, bilateral interactions. Uh, those who have seen uh, Prime Minister Modi's face in the morning and in the evening would see the contrast. Uh, there is a, uh, a slightly different face by the evening. Uh, and uh, you could see in the TV footage. Uh, this is also what researchers need to carefully look at. What has happened, what is the ground reality. Uh, and for us, the Bible is the press statement and the joint statement. Carefully read what was the statements before, what has actually appeared in the joint statement. As researchers, we need closely monitor this and see what has happened. Uh, so it's a mixed bag that we have high expectations and probably medium level uh, you know, results uh, on all those.
those that we just enlisted. So, uh, if you look at carefully the press statement by Prime Minister Modi, he starts with security concerns and he ends with security concerns. <coughs> In other words, generally when two major leaders meet, you have more goody goody things to say. You have more rosy stuff to paint. But here is Prime Minister Modi who was mentioning about security concerns. And he ends the press briefing with security concerns. So there is something, the script is not really uh, uh, you know, positive, uh, highly positive uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the interaction. It started off well on Sahurma TV front, but by the uh, Hyderabad House and after this session, there was a long shadow of the 200 percent because you have 1,000 troops present here. 1,000 troops is a quite a huge number. Because in 1967, when the Nathula Jedapla incident took place, there were only a few troops which have participated in this skirmish in Jedapla. Jedapla was grabbed by the Chinese at the time. Only Nathula remained with India, Sikkim at the time and then to India later on after Sikkim joined India. Uh, second major incident took place in Samburong Chu in 1987. In Samburongchu, China mobilized about 250 soldiers. Uh, last year, between April 15th to May 6th, in the Nelson Plains incident, over 200 Chinese were mobilized. India also mobilized a similar number of people. But last one week, actually from about August this year, we have seen gradual mobilization of troops on the tumor temple area. So, and this has reached roughly about a thousand troops from the Chinese side and 1500 troops from the Indian side. The 14th Corps of India and the 13th Group Army of China are responsible for any uh, eventuality in this area. So, the kind of mobilization that we saw in this area is actually unprecedented. Except in 1962, when thousand, uh, uh, more than several thousand of uh, soldiers were uh, in the street. So, so this had an impact on the construction uh, at Madhubar House and also the uh, uh, the joint statement. What does the joint statement contain? Joint statement contains uh, three items related to economic issues. And other issues are also related to the but mainly number one, 20 billion dollars for the next five years of investments in the uh, Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar, Industrial Park, and Pune Industrial Park. Number two, in terms of railways. Now, most of the Indian railways run at around say 80 kilometers per hour. Chinese are now running their railways at 350 kilometers per hour, or sometimes even 400 kilometers per hour. Between Beijing and Shanghai, it is about six hours time to reach, uh, which is a, quite a distance uh, they have. So they have high speed railways. Some 20,000 kilometers of high speed railways work in the China. So one of the projects is uh, to kind of replicate the Chinese However, the Indian Railways Ministry delegation to China was not really satisfied because the safety record of the Chinese high-speed railways is problematic. In Shandong province in 2008, there was a huge crash, killing nearly 240 people. In Wenzhou, closer to Shanghai, there was another crash some years ago, which also killed a similar number of people. Now, in India, this is highly controversial, right? The railway minister has to resign. So no Indian bureaucrat, no Indian official would like to have a Chinese high speed rail. So if there is a crash, they have to resign. So Indian politicians are a bit wary of uh, high speed rail, uh, especially from their job point of view. <laughs> we have seen uh, some crashes that took place 
several of these were not accepted. But what is important as the organizer also had suggested, there is a personal interaction between the two sides, which is very crucial. Uh, because both today are rising back. Both today have several <coughs> misperceptions. Uh, All India Radio used to broadcast in about 1970s that the other side, there are all many <coughs> to broadcast. Now, of course, they have stopped these broadcasts. But still, there are so many misperceptions. Uh, the Changi Chowk to China movie actually shows those misperceptions. Uh, we think that all Chinese are in you know, martial arts and uh, in traditional costumes and so on. The Chinese today are pretty modern, more modern sometimes than even Indians. Uh, in uh, so so that still, there are so many misperceptions. So the meeting that happened in Ahmedabad is actually very crucial. International relations cannot be caused by simply looking at the joint statement and what are the preferences, what are the minuses. There are so many intangibles as well. And this is the most intangible thing that they had uh, four to five hours of interactions and my hunch is China and India will never go to a war uh, because both are nuclear. The Demchok uh, tumor incidents are a kind of an aberration. These are tensions that happen on the LAC because the LAC itself is not clarified, the territorial dispute is not clarified. But if there is a situation where the tensions are pretty high, Xi Jinping and Hangi Yuan will remember what Modi did in America. Same way, if the tensions are pretty high, Modi will remember both uh, Xi Jinping and Tommy Yuan before taking a decision on the nuclear weapon. These are very, very important in international uh, Before somebody blinks, they understand the cultural context and the interactions before actually going to a, a very critical decision So I would suggest the, uh, the overall summit, the overall summit of the meeting within the group went out well in the initial period. There was the tumor damage of overshadow on the bilateral uh, relations and the talks. Uh, the expectations were pretty high before and when they actually decided, several of these were not uh, concluded, um, but there are chances for both the sides to interact further. So far, we, we had 